In this video, we're going to talk about the process of actually mounting a physical hard drive that you've collected from your subject computer. Now, as a reminder, you should have some sort of write blocker installed or at a minimum, at least set every device to not be auto mounted when it's detected. That way, it's not mounted and mounted as writable every time it's connected to your system. That should be the minimum. So here I have some pretty simple devices. I have my docking bay right here. And this is pretty cheap. This is about a $35 item that you can get online. It's USB 3 and it supports two and a half and three and a half inch SATA drives, which are the most common ones that you'll encounter. And I also have here a nice inexpensive USB 3 hub. So what I'm going to do is just connect this and I've set up this hub as my magic hub so that devices connected to it get mounted as read only. So I'll go ahead and plug this in here. And I'll plug it into my laptop. So now it's been plugged into my laptop. I will power up the appropriate ports. I will also power up my drive. And this should allow me to read the drive on the computer. So if I do an LS USB, I will see here's my backup drive. It's on bus two. And here I see my hub. I should also see another drive. And I believe it's this one right here. More importantly, if I do an ls on slash dev sd star, now I see that I have my internal drive A, a drive B, and a drive C. So drive B is the Toshiba backup. I can verify this by typing mount. And when I do, I see that yes, in fact, this Toshiba backup drive is mounted and it is SDB1. Now I can go ahead and I can use DC FLDD. And as before, we talked about the fact that you can either do one partition or do the entire drive. I normally recommend you do the entire drive. So I will just go ahead to make my life easier. I'm going to change to this drive. And you see there's a previous image that we made from our virtual machine, 19 gigabytes. And I'm going to go ahead and make an image of this drive, which actually comes from my daughter's Linux box. So now we're ready to actually make the copy. So the command we want to use is dcfldd and our input file in this case is slash dev slash sdc. That's the entire device. If I wanted just a partition, I could append a number to that. My output is going to be K Linux laptop IMG block size of 512. We will hash with SHA-256, and we will set a window of every megabyte, and our hash log will be K Linux laptop hashes. And it will take quite a while for this to run. So now we have our drive merrily copying away. You can see that the light is flashing. And if I look over here at my external backup drive that's storing this image, you'll notice that this little blue LED is also flickering. 
as the data is copied from one device to the next. So it's really that simple. It's in some ways a lot easier if you're using a physical device rather than a virtual hard drive device. But either way, it's not terribly difficult. Again, I definitely recommend at a minimum you disable automatic mounting. There is absolutely no reason to mount this drive onto your computer right now. You can simply have it set so that nothing gets mounted or you can have it automatically mounted as read-only, which is not actually what you want in this case. So that's all for this video.